Benedict's test is done primarily to detect the presence of simple carbohydrates in an unidentified analyte. In this test, a Benedict solution is used and this is made up of a mixture of sodium citrate, sodium carbonate, and pentahydrate of copper 2 sulfate. To understand why Benedict's solution is composed of the following, let's look more closely at how sugars are built. At high pH or alkaline solution, monosaccharides and a number of disaccharides become reactive. They have strong reducing properties because they have free aldehyde or ketone groups that can act as electron acceptors. If a reducing sugar is added to the Benedict solution, a yellow precipitate is formed. When the reducing sugar in an alkali solution is exposed to heat, it is converted to an indiol, a relatively powerful reducing agent. The free carbonyl carbons react with the oxidizing agent in Benedict's reagent, which are cupric ions, and these are reduced to cuprous ions. These cuprous ions form copper 1 oxide, a brick red precipitate. Gather leaves from a monocot plant and a dicot plant. Cut these leaves into 1 cm squared dimension and weigh 0.5 grams of leaf from each species. Don't forget to label your glasswares for monocot and dicot specimens. of each species in separate beakers with 50 ml water for 10 minutes. Don't forget to use distilled water. Take the boiled leaves and set them aside. We will now use the extract for the Benedict's test. In this test, transfer 3 ml of the monocot leaf extract into a test tube and then add the same volume of Benedict's reagent into the test tube. Do the same for the dicot leaf extract. Place the tubes with the solution in a hot water bath and record your results. Take the boiled leaves we have previously set aside. Place two to three pieces of these leaves in separate test tubes with 5 ml 95% ethanol. Then place these test tubes in a hot water bath, about 70 degrees Celsius, until the leaves appear bleached.
take the leaves and allow them to cool on a watch glass. Then bathe them in iodine solution. Finally, remove the excess iodine solution and record your observations. In this part of the experiment, we will be using the leaves of Sanchezia speciosa. As you can see, its leaves are variegated, and we will be performing the same procedure as before but this time, we will separate the variegated and non-variegated regions of its leaves. After accumulating enough amount to weigh 0.5 grams of each region, we may now perform the tests for reducing sugars and starch again. <music> 